Okay, well, welcome to um, the PIF Writers Connection. We're happy to have you in here. Our, well, um, Dawn French is, well, AL Dawn French is here with us. Well, Dawn, say hello. Hi, folks. Hey, Mel. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Well, Verna's hey, mic is. Mel, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mel. And I know Verna has uh, muted her mic. So let's start the show. As people come in, I will add them to the show. Right. Um, first and foremost, the way I always start my public speaking, I always say I greet everyone in the name of God and the ancestors in whose footsteps I most humbly walk. I am very pleased and honored to have, this is our first show, I'm um, here with the PIF Writers Connection. My co-host is A.L. Dawn French, and we're very happy to do this. Now, this show, for those who are listening for the first time with us, um, it came from a conversation we had at PIF 2018. I'm gonna let Dawn talk about that because um, she was one of the authors that was in the, uh, in the room at the hotel with us. And I was a little disturbed from what she was saying. So I said, we had to do something with the, with the Lucian writers. And so we extended from that, from Lucian writers to a global community. So Dawn, take it from there. Well, you know, Ed, um, it's always about the marketing. Uh, it, I think that someone said the writing is 1% and the marketing is the 99%. And I think one of the other panelists was also lamenting the fact that how can you do marketing when you don't have any money? They don't call it a struggling writer for nothing. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and I suppose it percolated in your brain over yes, the, the, these, these months and years. And, and now here we are trying to help. Um, not just us, but uh, not just St. Lucian writers, but but writers across the board. This is our first episode, and hopefully 10 years from now, we'll still be here because there are lots of writers out there. Yes. Um, but this is our first episode, and um, thanks to the folks who are here with us at the moment. We had some technical problems at the beginning. That's understandable. It's our first episode. Um, but we'll see how it goes from here, and um, it's just one step at a time. Yes. And, and, and you know, Dawn, uh, and for those who are listening, the, the challenge is just not the money. Also, the challenge, like you said, Dawn, it's about the marketing. Yeah. Because you can market with a few dollars in your pocket, just do it very smart, do it in the, in the correct way, or you could market with thousands and thousands of dollars in your pocket and still fail. True, true. So, so you have to understand how do you market with what you have in your pocket and who are you marketing to first? And so when I was in St. Lucia for PIF 2018, I was listening to what you and the other three other three writers were saying. Yeah, it was four of us. And I was a little disturbed because I know St. Lucia, being a Lucian myself, for those who don't know, I'm a born Lucian, but I grew up in the States. Um, mm -hmm. Being a Lucian myself, I know we have some great storytellers. <laughs> and we yeah. have some great stories yeah. in St. Lucia. Yes, yes. So the question that falls on my head and my heart is, what are we not doing and what do we need to do better? So uh, let me ask you, Dawn, before we go to your, we have your stuff up there. You're, you're my co-host today, but you're also the first guest. Right. So as an author, writer based in St. Lucia, what do you think we need to do better? For us um, in St. Lucia, I think we are looking at partnerships, the lack of partnerships. I think... I always use the, the, I don't know if you know the book, Ed, The History of St. Lucia. No, I don't um, know it's, it's, it's written by Jolene Hampson, Robert DeVoe, and Guy Ellis. Um, I think it's part of a series of books, I think Macmillan Press did with the islands, um, The History of, and we have The History of St. Lucia. This book is a bestseller. <laughs> the, the authors have their copies that the publisher gave them. They sold out. We go, we do pop-up shops. We sell out. It is constantly number one on the Amazon St. Lucia history page. This is a book that St. Lucians really refer to and, and use it as a benchmark when they want information. This book is not in the schools of this country. I have been to meetings where the authors have lamented that they have you know, tried to have discussions with the Ministry of Education to get this book on the book list. And my response to them has always been, why are you trying to lobby the Ministry of Education? From the time the ministry and the powers that be inside there, and this straddles both regimes, this is not a political thing, this is about technical and this is about education in our country. That the Ministry of Education from the time they knew that book was going to be launched should have been knocking on your door 
seeking a partnership of how they were going to get this book into the social studies and, and those that teach history, get this into the history classes. That simple thing would have given these three authors a steady stream of royalties. Because if it's on the book list, the kids have to go and buy it. Every, the parents have to buy it every year as the, as the kids move up. But the, what is happening? The authors are trying to get the ministry, to have an audience with the ministry for them to have discussions about putting the book. This, this is what we call in the Creole tetaba. This is upside down. There's something <laughs> wrong. And so when I say partnerships, it starts at home. We're not looking to conquer the world yet, although I would like to conquer the world. Let me raise my hand <laughs> in, in full disclosure. <laughs> well, I don't know what Mel is going to say about that. These, these are what I'm looking at. You know, um, these kind of partnerships where the material is relevant. Yes. We have the after school program. And there's so many authors in St. Lucia, not just myself, but there are other people who write for that, for children. These books are not being used in, in the after school program with the kids. Mm. So what, are, what message are we sending? And so we started the partnerships and from there, then we can look at all the other big things, but just those little things of the support of the local writer. Okay. Well, let me ask you, Dawn, um, since you are a local writer and we have Mel and Verna, is Mel and Verna also writers in, are they authors in St. Lucia? Verna, Verna is an author. Um, Mel is one of my, my, my beta readers for my Peanut Tales and my Sabine stories. So let me she's, ask the one, she's the one that vets <laughs> it and, and tells me if it's good to go or if I need to go back to the drawing board. That's Mel's uh -oh. role. That's Mel's job. Okay. That's well, Mel's job. Well, Verna, unmute your mic and let me hear your somewhat Dawn said. What do you have? Because you're an author, you're a writer based in St. Lucia, Verna. So unmute your mic and let me hear what you have to say. Hello. Yeah, Hi, okay, so well, I would second uh, Miss Dawn French on that. I believe it's all about partnership. Um, you know, I just came across the the message on her page saying that there was a writer's um, connection. And just earlier, I was just saying to myself that I need to contact her and find out um, if there are anything in place for local offers where we can come together and try to uplift each other and to help each other to, to find ways to market out there and to get our work out there. And like she was saying, it's all about how can you market with no finance? It's very difficult. You know, when you have low finance and you have to market, it's, it's difficult because mm -hmm. these are some of the challenges that I'm facing right now because um, I'm a romance author and um, I'm trying my best to find the right target audience out there who would enjoy romance um, reads. And I would have to spend money. I have to find all sorts of ways to do it. And if you have a low income, it's, it's very difficult. And um, I totally agree with what she's saying when it comes to um, the other offers who write for, you know, they could, they could try to put those things in place for children at the schools. And so that that way um, offers can feel like they're not alone. Because I could tell you a lot of us become discouraged because we do not have the type of support that we need, first and foremost, from, the, um, from St. Lucians itself. So um, I think it's important that we try to get that, get that word well. I know it's something that has been spoken before to the ministry, but I think they need to understand that there are a lot of solutions out there with a lot of talent, and there are some as well who are growing up who wants to become writers, who wants to go into writing, but because of the way that things are going on on the island, we don't get much, much of our work out there. We don't get much attention from, from being a writer. Then people get dissuaded. I, I wanted to be a writer from the age of 12, and I, the first thing I said to myself, being on an island as small as St. Lucia, maybe I wouldn't be able to do well. And um, lately, I decided I just wanted to write again because um, for whatever reasons I said, it helps me calm down. And I had recently left my job. So I decided to go back into writing. And, and there are a lot of benefits to it. And I just want to know that we can find a way here on the island 
to assist others out there who are who are writing and who are published and who are trying to get their work out there so that it can go out there you know um contact the local um agencies the magazines because recently i tried to contact spark and just to get our word out there just to to let the public know that there are local writers who who do so that way they won't go on amazon and go look for those other offers that are that are um, from America. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that the other authors from America, but they would first go and see. Okay, well, there are romance writers, there are um, kids, kids writers out there, children book writers, and they would first the first set of people they would look out for is for the for the islanders. Mm -hmm. well, you let understand? Me, let me throw oh, something. Bernard, can I just say, Ed, oh, before yeah. you mm -hmm. jump in, Verna? So brace yourself because Ed asked me for a list of authors that he can start planning. <laughs> Um, for the writer's connection and I gave him your name. Oh, that's really sweet. Your, Thank name, you. your email and the link to your book so that he could mm -hmm. see it. So when he, when you suddenly get an email from this gentleman inviting you, you know, you know who the culprit is, you know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, oh, um, definitely. I look forward to that. Okay. I'm listening to what you say, Bernard, and an interesting thing for me, and I've had this, um, this has been my model since day one with PIF in 2014. And I said it in a very respectful, I say, I don't do PIF for Lucians, right? Because St. Lucians already know what we have in St. Lucia. That's preaching to the choir. So what I do with PIF, I say, PIF is about taking St. Lucia and selling St. Lucia to the global community, right? I'm inviting non-Lucians to come to St. Lucia to see what we can do in St. Lucia. And that's been my mentality with PIF. Because if I go to if I go to market PIF to Lucians, I think I'll get I'll get almost no one listening to me because Lucians already know what St. Lucia has to offer. So I market PIF to the global community so they can see what St. Lucia has to offer, inviting them to St. Lucia. And the reason I say that I'm listening to what you're saying. With the internet so readily available, um, what has what I know what Dawn's doing already with the internet with her marketing on the internet, which is free to into a uh, market and, and actually build a movement. Um, what are uh, Lucian authors other than Dawn French <laughs> is doing with the internet? Because through I know my wife, she has her books on Amazon and, she, and they publish, they print as 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 ordered. It's a print to order, right? Yeah, the print on demand service. Yes, right. That's there. So that means you don't have to have a you don't have to have a stock. Okay. So there's a lot of things out there that's globally that's being used outside of St. Lucia because there's Lucians all over the world. There's first, okay. There's Lucians all over the world. There's people who love St. Lucia all over the world. And there's people who are curious to know what's going on all over the world. So what are we doing to connect with these people who are trying to get who first who don't know St. Lucians are out there? Who, secondly, who know about St. Lucia and want to know more about St. Lucia. They, they know St. Lucia is a great destination for honeymoons and the beach and stuff like that. But what are we doing? What are the authors doing to market themselves outside of that circle? But Ed, you see, also, you have to, as you say, mind your own business. Because back in the day, um, when Sunshine Bookshop was, was up and running, mm -hmm. I used to have uh, material at Sunshine Bookshop. And I would pass there every now and then because I'm a book reader as well. And I'm going inside there to buy books, my magazines, my newspapers, etc. And I would walk in and the, the display at the, in the window and as you enter would be all the international writers. And I, would be, and I would say, where is my book? And they have it at the back of another book. So because I'm there now, they're pulling it out. And I keep saying... As a visitor, somebody comes to St. Lucia, they know where to buy James Patterson. They know where to buy J.K. Rowling. They know where to buy J.D. Robb. Mm -hmm. They can get that anywhere. They're coming to St. Lucia, and if they come to a bookshop, they're looking for the local books. Put, and by all means, have the international authors, but don't have them up in the show window. So what was, what, what the, was the question? The shop. What have was the local. answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when somebody says, yeah, 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 you know what the response is. Uh -huh. You know what the action is, the no, the no action. So you'd come back whenever and it would be the same old, same old, and then you repeat the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just a, a vicious cycle. But I'm just saying it to show the mindset. It's not just a government mindset. Mm -hmm. It's just 
how it is. I saw an article earlier this year, um, January, where um, one of the councils in Ireland was, was putting their foot down and said, this freeness culture, when it comes to creatives, must stop. And they were going to start putting policies in place to make sure that when a creative does work, they get paid properly or they get paid full stop. And I thought, oh, okay, so St. Lucia is not the only place where creatives are really struggling. Everybody expects you to work for free. Well, that's mm. a, 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 that, that happens in the U.S. also, but I think what happened, because St. Lucia is so small, right. it, it, you know, it's, it, looks, it looks worse. But in the United States, we have the same issue here, but because we have 50 states and we have all this land mass, mm -hmm. you could actually, you, I mean, I could leave, I'm in Pennsylvania. I could leave Pennsylvania and go to New Jersey or go to Florida. Right. You know, very easy. Just drive. You cannot leave San Lucia and drive to Dominica or drive. Mm -hmm. You have to have, you know, so it, yeah. makes, it makes it, it amplifies it even more so in San Lucia or small islands like San Lucia. And that's why I had to ask. Well, I have said, you know, the buck stops here. You know, if, <laughs> no, if everybody, so we work in a cause, Ed. You know, we're doing something for Red Cross or the Cancer Society or the Animal Protection Society and everybody working for free. I'm your gal. But you mm -hmm. cannot tell me you're going to pay the cleaner, you're going to pay the sound man, and then you're going to look at me and say, in the panels, hey, I don't have money, huh? Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. If, and even if it's $50 you give me, mm -hmm. it's the principle is not the amount. It's the principle that I'm talking about. Well, I you have to be paying some, and the creative who is the one that's the draw for your charity event, you're not going to pay them, but you're going to pay all the tech support. Well, you know, I get this. I get the same issue up here in the U.S. as a photographer. You know, um, everyone's they pay everyone, then they look at the photographer and they're like, "Okay, yeah, thanks a lot." <laughs> so, I mean, so in the creative circles, I think one of our challenges in the creative circles, um, not only for writers, just across the board, is that I think sometimes, and I know here in the U.S., I could talk we about. We got a new person in, Ed. Yeah, we welcome. Um, yeah, I just let I just let them in. Um, the last name is Lubin. Lubin. Hello. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, sorry we, about that. Yeah, yeah, we have to. Um, I think we need to um stop one. Creators have to stop stabbing each other in the back. Okay? The race to the bottom. Yeah. So I think that's something we have to look at because I will give a price, and another photographer will come and undercut my price. Yes, that's what I meant by the race to the bottom. Yeah. So we have yeah. to first realize that if we're not all pulling in the same direction, it's not going to take off. Okay. But you also have to understand your own worth as well. As yes. a, because I had a certain magazine reach out to me last year um, to ask if I would be a contributing writer to the magazine. And I wrote back and I said, well, how much are you paying? Uh -huh. and they said, we're not paying for the articles. So I wrote back and I said, but you're paying the, the printer to print the magazine. The sales manager who is <laughs> out there getting the ads for your magazine, you're paying them. When you change your policy, call me. And I didn't write for them. Yeah, I, I, you were writing for them for free. Mm -hmm. But as I said, the buck stops here. And as I said, just say, Don, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I, all I can give you is $50 for an article. And I'll say, fine, you let me decide if, I, if I'm going to take the $50 or not. And I will take the $50 that can put a couple of, you know, maybe a gallon of gas in my car. And I will say, okay, I will take the $50. But it's not the amount of money. It's about changing the mindset of expecting um, content creators to do it for free when everybody yeah. else is making a dollar. Yeah. You're paying the lady to clean your office. So why are you not paying <laughs> me to write the article? Without the articles, you have no magazine. Well, I think one, you know, and I welcome all the people who are coming in. Galaxy Tab, welcome to the, the conversation. This is... um. We, the PIF um, Writers Connection. Thank you for joining and Ms. Um, Lubin. I think one thing the creative people need to come together and realize that if you cut my legs off, you're actually cutting your legs off also. Because once you undercut me, someone will come and undercut a new, you. A, a new benchmark is set. Yeah. And then you and then you and then you're disrespecting and you're disrespecting your your quality of work because you're yeah. saying to the person that um my price is flexible, I will almost do it. Some people do it for free. But you know and, what happens as well sometimes, Ed? Um, particularly like um the guys who perform some of the bands who perform in the hotels, mm -hmm. because they undercut each other. I don't say all of them do it, but one of one or two of them do, they undercut so bad they're now in the negative. 
Wow. Yeah. I honest, I believe that. No, because so, as you said that, that's so bad that you you're not you're not making money, you're not breaking even, you are losing money. You're subsidizing the hotel now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a challenge. It's a very fine line with that because, you know, Sister Dawn and those who are listening, you know, in PIF, I will ask, like, you know, Claudia Edwards um, um, and LDL, we Bo, Bo Hinkson, um, and we have um, Rob Zai Taylor and several other musicians on mm -hmm. um, Dupes. Dupes has, they have come out to support us with their music. And mm -hmm. what I, you know, we didn't have the funding to pay them so what I have done is I have taken their work and I have sent it out to people I know in the industry so that way to help them. And I, whenever I use their work, I let them know I'm using your work and this is where it is. Because I, like I said, to them, I said, listen, because PIP has such a tight, almost invisible budget, let me take my connections and put your work out there. And because we have done that, we have a young lady, a young musician who got a, who got a gig on a show in Hollywood. She was basically no, there, there's, there's, so there, there's that part of it as well, mm -hmm. where you waste the networking, the networking, yeah, the networking. But if I am going to be called in to to do a job, I need to be paid. Oh yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah. And that's and that's what we did when, when we shot the short film, The Bench and Solution, 2018. We had a very limited budget, but everyone got paid. Everyone got paid, and we made sure that you know because we wanted to make people understand we 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 don't have all the money to pay you all this big sum, but we had a budget to pay everyone. So everyone walked away from the bench with money in their pocket, and then we took and we we kept on pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And that's something we have to see. We have to look at creative as authors in Saint Lucia, um, with the internet, with the power of the internet. How do we use the internet um, to make things? better for the writers because like i said when i was there in 2018 i was listening to you you dawn and the other three writers that was on the panel it disturbed me because i know saint lucia has some great writers mm -hmm. and we have some great stories mm -hmm. and, wh and when i see what's being you know up here what's becoming films and stuff like that i said there's a disconnect mm -hmm. somewhere there's a disconnect mm -hmm. from, the, from the authors to the screenplays to the films Mm -hmm. And where is that disconnect happening? And, mm -hmm. you know, how do we correct that? I know we have a few minutes left in the show. So, Dawn, I, um, I see we have several people on. If anyone wants to say anything, please let us know. You're in and private mode, I and so switch to, to public. I, um, I, thought I, came out of, I thought I came out of private. You say in private, so just change the setting. I think that's you that's in private. It says Dawn private. No, I changed to everyone because I just, I just um, answered mail. Oh, okay. well, once you cannot pay in money, you can pay in networking. And I just answered her for everyone to see. And I said, yes, I agree with that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and this is what a lot of us rely upon in the creative industry. And we're talking about writers here specifically. It's a lot of networking. Yes. I rely, I'm doing, I'm doing the reading month at the moment where I'm putting out the, the stories in audio format. Um, where a friend of mine read the peanut tales and I put it up on YouTube and and the distribution of the link it's you know I'm, I'm relying on my friends you know a try a little help from my friends I'm, I'm asking them to send it to their networks and hopefully it, it will get some viral traction in that way because I have no money to to advertise that I'm doing something for reading month because normally for reading month I'd physically go into the schools Right. But with COVID out there and school closed, I figured why should I still not take part in Reading Month? And so we we've done the videos and we're sending it out to the schools twice a week, but not to the school, to the kids, um, through my adult network. Hopefully, it's reaching you know some of the children. Okay. That's the best you can do because <laughs> the budget is zero dollars. Zero dollars. So, yeah. but, so how has COVID um, hurt or helped the writers in Saint Lucia? Um, just, I, don't know, someone, I don't know if someone wants to answer that. Someone wants to put their hands up. Yeah, and, someone wants to put their hand up in the meantime. Well, for me, I'm, um, I'm, I'm retired, so I was, I was home. <laughs> I was home anyway. Um, but it was interesting because I was taking part in a poetry seminar with Kendall Hippolyte, um, as hosted by 758 Books, Delia Fasois, um, um project. And we started out at the 758 Books bookshop, like, the first three or four seminars it was once a week and we were all there the 12 of us with Kendall 
discussing poetry, learning how to understand a poem, the reading of a poem, the writing of a poem. And then we had to switch to virtual. Huh. And so we ran it on Skype and, and we continued for the rest of, it was, it was 12 sessions in all. So for eight sessions, we were virtual. And, and we would email in our poems that we were going to be discussing the, that week and, and we would meet and discuss and it worked. So the technology has helped, but you know, there's nothing like being, there's nothing like telling a story to a group of kids and getting their feedback. And I'm, and I'm not getting that because when I go into the schools, I, I do a peanut tail and mm -hmm. I don't get that feedback from the children. Um, do they like it? Do they not like it? How should I fix it? I don't get that dialogue now that I'm doing it virtually. It's just a one way where I'm sending it out. I don't even know if it's reaching its target. It's just mm -hmm. out there on the wind. Okay. Yeah, see, you know, for me right now, if, um, COVID has given us an opportunity to look at what we did not do and what's done because all the, a lot of things people were saying they couldn't do before, now they do right. it because they have to do it. Yeah, they have to now. They have yeah. to now. So now you see your opportunity to get some stuff done because even here with Zoom, do, doing this whole Zoom stuff, I would not have done this before. But right. because of COVID, we had to find other ways to um, reach out to our audience and stuff like that. So, um, Well, what I, was interesting for me as well, I had stopped uploading the peanut tails to Amazon. Why? Because the, the product is not shifting and it doesn't make sense adding more product to the, to the shelf. Okay. So I but didn't mean I stopped writing the peanut tales. I understand. But I had stopped uploading them. And then COVID came along and I did a couple of COVID related stories of peanut and the whole thing of why should I have to stay home, etc. Trying to explain to children to break it down to kids what this thinks. I mean, some adults are grappling if it can imagine a child. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, okay, I'm gonna have to put these up because how else am I going to get the message to the children if I just write and bank? So I kind of came out of that mode at the moment where I was just writing and not uploading and I've been writing and uploading. Um, but I'm about to go back into my non uploading mode again, because I think I'm done with the, the, the COVID cycle of stories at the moment. Okay. Okay. And, and so let me ask uh, Mel, uh, Mel, see, you said she, Mel's the one who, who um, goes through your stuff for you? Yes, Mel, Mel, Mel you're on the spot. Mel goes okay. through my stuff. Un, yeah. Unmute un, un, the mic, Mel. I'm, I'm going to unmute Mel. And what, hello, Mel, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I yes, can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, Mel. Now, yes. Mel, let me, let me ask you, because we have about four minutes left. As someone who goes through Dawn's writing, um, what are you looking for on, on what red flags um, comes up that makes you want to put a line through it or get in contact with it as someone who is going through the, the work. So I want, I want the other, the reason I'm asking you that question, I want the other writers who are listening to get an idea of what, um, about writing and what you, what you look at, what you look for. Well, with Dawn's work, the majority of what I look for, because her, her work is usually based on something that is happening or something in history. So I look at it from the historical aspect because that's my forte, okay. number one. Um, I look for, I'm an avid reader and I have children also. So I look for, like in the peanut tales, what would excite a child? Because my child at her age is also an avid reader. So what would excite a child and how the, how the flow is, how everything flows together and comes together, if it comes together nicely. That's basically it. <laughs> and, then, and then now Sabine, what do you look for in Sabine? Oh, what do you look for in Sabine? Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> well, Sabine is more for the adult taste. So I look for that. I have learned a lot from Sabine. I, I should say that, throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> and Sabine takes us into the future. So we're thinking of, okay, in 120 years from now, looking at probably technology how it is now how will it change by then in our imagination and so on so that's it for sabine <laughs> <laughs> okay i know we have about two minutes left so um dawn why yes. don't you give give your contact information for those writers and in st lucia who are listening to you who might want to be a guest on the show 
Um, how, how, and you know, because they know you better than know, they know me. So how would they get in contact with you? Well, um, my, my email address is um, D-A-W-N-N-B-O-O-K-X-S. I'm typing it into the group as I'm talking, um, okay. gmail.com. I okay. misspell gmail. So it's donbooks at gmail.com. D-A-W-N-N books at gmail.com. That, that's how I can be reached. Yeah. yeah and, and, but, you know, Ed, because um, the, the Sabine books are, are not for children. Let, let's get that out there. They're for I, was just about, I was just about to ask you that. <laughs> they tend for adults because the content is adult. Okay. Really? And, and Mel is not the only one who reads for me. She happens to be the one in the group. And I remember I sent out one um, last year and the readers rejected it almost a mass and because it didn't have, it didn't have any sex in it. Okay. And, and they said, but hello, this is not a Sabine book. What the hello, what's this? And I had to go back because I was trying to get away from that. And, no, no, no. The Sabine books is not a Sabine book unless we have at least one sex scene inside there. So I had to go and insert the scene and resubmit my manuscript to my bank of readers. There are about four of them. Um, and I've just got a guy on board now to check for me. So it's not just um, the ladies who are reading it. I have the men telling me the same thing. The feedback is across the, the two genders is the same. Hello, you need to resubmit this manuscript. So I had to do it because it wasn't getting a passing grade from my bank of readers. So I just want to be up front to say that the peanut tales are for kids 12 and under and the sabine stories are for 18 plus so please if you get a sabine story do not call and email me and and take my head because i'm giving the one up and it's written on the book anyway so i see um, verna has her hand up so let me unmute her mic right go ahead verna can you hear us verna Oh, yes, I can. I can yes. hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes can. we can. Okay, well, um, I've heard of Sabine, but um, Dawn, I will have to take a look at it. <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> yes, I'll have to take a look at it. I am, I love books like that. <laughs> like I told you, I'm a romance author, so yeah. Um, I wanted to know, is there a, a like a group online, a Facebook group or something that um, y'all have organized together that maybe I can join so that that way I can um, be able to um, like speak to all the other writers involved and stuff like that. Is there uh, anything like that in place? Not, not that I am aware of. Um, no, to, to, because you were looking for marketing, right? Is well, that actually, not not just for marketing, but also just to um, to um, for networking, just to meet other um, offers right. um, locally. Because um, I had the opportunity to meet some of the members from the Saint Lucia Writers Forum, right. and honestly, I was not too ex like I was not too pleased with how things were going on, but. Then again, that's another story yes, for it itself. Is. Yes, it is. And um, honestly, um, I've always, I've never met you in person, Don. But I remember when you had your um, your book launch. I actually came over at Seven Five Eight Bookstores, and when I got there, they said that you cancelled the um, the um, launch. Oh, it was a reading. It was a reading. Yes, that we it was a reading. Before. So and I was very day. excited. I Nobody was very excited did. to meet um, the other female authors. Right. But, um, I haven't had a chance to meet other female authors here on the island or like even those from the Caribbean. I haven't had a chance. I, I would usually um, meet with the other authors like online and stuff, but yes. not locally, not regionally. So I it would be really nice if y'all can um, probably um, organize a group chat on Facebook well, I put a link um, in the in the chat there for for Facebook. There's there's a Facebook page called Saint Lucia International Book Club. It was set up by Anderson Reynolds. I used to be in it, but I left for my own personal reasons. I left, but you may want to, because there are a few Saint Lucian writers in there, um, so you may want to follow and see if it works for you, and um, take it from there. 
Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. That well, seems to be a problem here on the island. Um, we have a lot of offers who do not um, try to encourage others and they, they would usually try to bite <laughs> by each other's but in the back <laughs> which is sad it's sad it's sad you know the only way we can um we can be able to, like have success through all of that is by motivating and encouraging each other well let yeah. me say a this of, a lot of people um um come to me for 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 these sorts of things um in fact somebody just came to me about copywriting and um, because of the so many questions that she had, let me put the link in the group as well. Um, I ended up doing a, a, a blog post. I have something called the ad hoc blog because that's what it is, it's ad hoc. <laughs> it has no rhythm, no rhyme to what I'm writing or when I'm writing. And I just dumped all the copyright information that I was aware of with all the various links. You can maybe click on it and see if that will work for you if there's anything in there that, that is of assistance to you. But okay, in well, terms of networking, you could maybe try the International St. Lucia Book Club. Well, I know we, we have gone over our time with Zoom, so I have to see why I put. But those who are listening, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, we're going to be doing this once a month. Dawn and I, Dawn is my co-host. We're going to be doing this once a month. Um, the PIF um, Writers Connection, as PIFF stands for Detroit International Film Festival. Because if you don't have a write, if you don't have a script, you don't have a film, and that's so. This is connected yeah. to the film to the yeah. film festival. So we're going to be doing more and more things. So please keep in contact with us and um, keep in contact with Dawn. And we're going to be doing this again next month. We're going to be doing it on Sunday. So we're going to put the date out for next month um, when Dawn and I are going to sit down and look at our schedule. Um, it's going to be happening on Sunday from now, for once a month, every month. Okay? Um, so I'd like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank my co-host, Ms. A.L. Dawn French. Welcome, sir. Thanks, everybody who logged in. Yeah, Sorry, who logged in. The, it was the first episode, so we had a little yeah. glitch at the yeah. start. Yes, yeah, so and we're going to, we will fix that up this month before we come back next month. So thank everyone for coming. Thank everyone. For, um, please be safe. Wear your mask, your gloves, social distancing um, until the authorities tell us what to do next. Okay. Dawn, you want to say something in closing? Be safe. Be careful. Stay home. Those of us that can stay home, stay home. If you have to be out there as a frontline worker, I thank you for your service mm -hmm. and be safe. Okay. Good night. Good night, family. God bless. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.